As most of you may know, there have been several sightings of zombies lately, and at least three authenticated outbreaks. And there have been an increasing number of outbreak reports since the first of the year. The recent outbreaks have been attributed to the Solanum virus, but this has not yet been confirmed. It should be noted that there are at least two and possibly three case causes of zombieism. One, of course, is the Solanum virus, and the other... Well, to understand that one, we must go back to the 1950s and Dr. Warren Chapin. Dr. Chapin was interested in what caused the tingling sensation in our bodies when we feel fear. After much research, Dr. Chapin discovered it was caused by a tiny parasite that attached itself to our spinal columns and fed off of nerve impulses. This parasite is with us before birth. When a woman becomes pregnant, hormones in her body cause the parasite to reproduce. Larvae then travel to the fetus where one of them succeeds in implanting in the fetal backbone, just at the base of the spine. Once in place, it causes the fetus to exude a detracted chemical. The other larva, unable to find a host, die off. One of the peculiarities of this parasite that Dr. Chapin noticed is that it grew larger the longer we went without screaming. Experimenting with mute patients, Dr. Chapin was able to grow a parasite to an enormous size. Examining the creature, Dr. Chapin discovered that it had taken in human cellular material, and this material was what caused the enormous growth. This also was likely the cause of the mutated appearance of the giant parasite, rather unlike the original tiny form. Researching the larval form of the parasite, Dr. Chapin realized that it was related to a barnacle that parasitizes crabs, Sacculina carcini. Sacculina carcini takes over the crab's body and alters it so that the crab becomes nothing more than a vessel for making more Sacculina carcini. Like other foolish researchers that came before, who become so absorbed in their own little world, Dr. Chapin turned a blind eye to the potential dangers of his giant mutated parasite. Desperate to find a host, the giant parasite attacked Dr. Chapin, killing him in the process. Dr. Chapin's son, Warren Chapin Jr., became obsessed with the animal that had killed his father and was determined to eradicate it from the world. His professors at Miskatonic University tried to argue with him, explaining that Sacculina Chapini, as it came to be known, was just another opportunistic creature living on us, harmless if left alone. Warren Chapin Jr. didn't listen and began to experiment in secret. One of the experiments he did was to cross Sacculina Chapini with Sacculina Carcini. Most of these crosses were not viable or were harmless, but one was deadly, and thus Warren Chapin Jr. became the first victim of Sacculina zombieism. Warren Chapin Jr. was the forgotten by all but a few. Unfortunately, some miscreants, recently escaped from the Arkham Jail, discovered Jr.'s abandoned lab while looking for a hideout and somehow managed to infect themselves. The authorities acted quickly once they started attacking others, but although the original zombified punks were rounded up and dispatched, some of their victims escaped, and so did the vicious crustacean. Since then, there have been numerous confirmed outbreaks of Sacculina zombieism. Identifying the different types of zombieism can be difficult, but is necessary since Sacculina zombieism can be stopped in its tracks by prompt action. The larva, a result of the cross between species, attaches at the base of the neck, not the spine, and then sends tendrils both into the brain and down the spinal column. For this reason, like the other form or forms of zombieism, the zombie can be uh, killed by either destroying the brain or by severing the connection by severing the neck. Should you come in contact with any type of zombie, it's best to remember to be careful to keep the victim at arm's length if possible. A very effective zombie restraining device is pictured. Next, keep them away from your person. There is a special zombie shield that has been recently developed and that some use for this purpose. It is also best to wear protective clothing or covering. And finally, use implements that will effectively dispatch the zombie or zombies as quickly as possible with the least amount of fuss. Now, the Sacculina cross can't tolerate cold. If you are presented with a victim of Sacculina zombieism, immediately apply as much ice or frozen vegetables to the back of their neck, then securely tie and or chain them in case you are too late or if it isn't Sacculina zombieism. We don't want any accidents. Now keep ice on the neck for at least six hours. Sacculina chapini cannot survive longer than that in the human body. 
You should keep the individual secured for at least 12 hours, preferably 24, because although the larvae should be dead, they don't go down without a fight. Desperate to survive, the larvae might try to attach to any nerves they can, usually in the limbs. This can cause uncontrolled and possibly dangerous activity, including what appears to be strange dancing motions. Please observe any and all activity, filming it if possible, and reporting to the CDC hotline. This activity should mostly cease within 36 hours, however sporadic outbreaks may occur for weeks, becoming less as time passes. The question then is how to identify the difference between Solanum zombies and Sacculina zombies. The answer is rot. All zombies injure themselves because they can no longer feel what is happening to them. These injuries tend to rot since the individual is now essentially dead. Solanum zombies have an accelerated rotting, whereas Sacculina zombies rot at about the rate one would expect for the human body. In the early stages, this can be hard to detect, so caution must always be taken, and the zombies dispatch as quickly and cleanly as possible. Should someone suffer what might be a possible infection through a bite or otherwise coming into contact with a zombie's bodily fluids, mucous membranes, eyes, and previous existing wounds are previously susceptible. And if you can't clearly identify which type of zombie it is, err on the side of Sacculina and you might save someone's life. Be sure to take the proper precautions as described above. As I mentioned before, there may be a third cause of zombieism, since in some cases, severely advanced rotting is observed. This may be due to an individual's susceptibility to the Solanum virus, a variant of the Solanum virus, or an entirely new cause. This is currently being investigated by some of the finest minds in the field. Anyway, in conclusion, be careful out there.